guys. Welcome to another episode of the Daddy Everyday Show. I know it's been a minute. It's been quite a while. It's been quite a yes. while. I'm here with my co-host, Dylan, and Godzilla, if I got that right. Got to make sure you get it right. <laughs> I can't be calling those characters the wrong name because not only does the character get upset, but <laughs> Dylan doesn't like it as well. Um, this episode is going to be just catching up with the Barnes boys. So but it's been so long. It's been a while. So... There's no helpful tips, but you may still learn something along the way. Um, but yeah, a lot has been going on in our lives, positive and not so positive. Negative. Yeah, not so positive, but we're still making it through. You see we're recording, so we're not going to let that stop us. So a little housekeeping, as always, before we get started. So if you haven't joined the text line, because I've been sending out text messages, and I know I've slacked a little because of everything, just trying to get balance back. But if you text JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 770-706-7, I mean, well, let me run that back. Let me run it back. It happens. It happens, you know. Um, text JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 770-706-7. 3780. It's amazing you can still mess up in your reader. Yes. Yeah, like numbers. That should be the easier. And the funny thing is, sometimes when there's already a mistake in the reading, you read over it. Like you read the right thing, you realize, oh, wait, I just read the right thing, even though that's wrong. That is true. That is so true. Like you can read someone's message and you, you correct their mistake, not even knowing it. Like what if there's like two does and you only read one? Right. <laughs> like, oh, wait, there was two? I didn't right. even notice that. That's right. Yeah. And we're still um, working on raising funds for the center. I've had some setbacks because actually this month, August, um, we were supposed to have two events. But because of life, uh, those events are going to be pushed back to September. I'll give you more updates on those events. But to donate and just find out what's going on with Daddy Every Day, uh, go to daddyeveryday.org. You get all the updates. And everything you need to know about Daddy every day. Now, let's get into what's been going on with the Barnes boys. Um, where should we start? Uh, let's start. I want to end strong. So let's start with some unfortunate news. Um, this is part of the reason why we've been off for a while. And then other stuff with life and scheduling and everything. But... So the biggest thing right now that's going on in our family is my little brother, um, the little brother who's actually bigger than me, but <laughs> still the little brother by age. Um, on August 4th, he had a stroke. Like this is the first time I'm sharing this um, with people because um, I don't want to give all the details because it, it's ultimately his story to tell. But like with anything that happens to someone, their loved ones are affected. So I got the call Sunday morning while I'm at um, the day gig trying to get things in order. I started a new position, so I'm trying to get things in order. And five hours into my shift, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, I get a call from his cell phone, which one concerned me because he works overnight. So he don't, he's normally sleep in the morning. So and two he would text me first because, he know, I work in the morning. So he would normally text me. So that concerned me. And then the person on the other end was not him giving me a call. Uh, just They gave me the news that he just had a stroke. And they'll give me the update on which hospital they're taking him to. So me, i not sure what to do next. Like, um, I'm, you know, in shock, obviously, that. You know, my brother had a stroke and he's 40, 42. He's so young in that sense. So I'm still doing stuff at work because I don't know where to go yet. So there's no need for me to rush home. Let me. So, you know, I can go over with my team members what I need them to do. You know, let my boss know, hey, what happened? And I'm about to go, you know, go home, talk to the boys, Kendrick and Dylan. Just let them know what happened. And. I finally get the call like he's going to Grady. Shout out to Grady. The amazing experience there. But anyway, so I'm now racing in Grady and I go see him and he's heavily sedated. Like and I spend the next week there. Like I I'm there. Like I go home 
for an hour or two to make sure the boys are taken care of. You know, they're, they're big and grown now. But they're starting middle school and college. So, like, the timing of it is crazy. Like, I'm wanting to spend that time with them. But, you know, when life hits, you just got to react. So, I, you know, go check on them, grab some clothes, because every night I just plan to spend the night there. Because I want, when he awakes, to to see a familiar face. So, for that week, like the next five, six days, it's the doctors awake him just long enough to say, hey, can you, do you know where you are? Can you move your hands and, and toes and stuff? And on the right side, he can't. So he's always moving the left, moving the left leg and everything. But I'm there. And one time he called me over, like he motioned like this. This is when, this is probably like day five or so. And um, so I come over and stuff and he looks at me and then goes right back to sleep. Because like I said, he's heavily sedated, high blood pressure and everything. Um, but the crazy thing is, he had the stroke on Sunday, and sometime between Sunday and Monday morning, uh, he had a heart attack as well. So, like, he's, like, really bad off. But I'm here to report that he's much better. He's, he's conscious now. He's not, he doesn't have all those tubes hooked up to him. Um, he's learning how to, you know, kind of try to sit himself up and everything. So he has a long road ahead of him. But I'm encouraged because now we're like in this ending the second week. So actually the taping of this episode right here makes exactly two weeks in it, since it happened. And he's much better off um, than he was. And he's about to go to the Shepherd Center to get physical therapy. But once again, I want to just give a huge shout out to the doctors, the nurses and just the staff at Grady. They've been so amazing. Um I just watch how they treated my brother and then even me too, like always keeping me informed, checking on me to see how I'm doing. So I just amazing um, job at Grady. So I, I want to definitely give them their shout out. Um, but yeah, he's improving and, and I'm going to be his caregiver. So once he's done with physical therapy, I'm going to become his caregiver. And it's amazing how life just hits you. And like you like that Sunday morning, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, he's at church. This happens to him while he's at church. So he's at church with his family and I'm at work doing my thing, trying to get my new department in order. And neither one of us knew where we were, you know, where life was going to take us. Um, but, you know, that's my little brother. So I'm going to make sure he gets the best care um, with me. And then I have an awesome supporting cast that's going to come through. And help support him and me as well, because this is a tall task. Um, I'm ready, you know, and um, I'm going to give it my all. So just want to give you guys updates. I know some of you guys are aware, but for those that don't know. So that's what I've been dealing with. Well, me and the family have been dealing with. So um, your prayers are always needed. You know, pray for him. You know, he gets a full recovery and pray for me that I'm able to assist him. Um, to the best of my abilities and everything. So I just wanted to get that out the way. And and my feeling of being overwhelmed, because I actually, you know, part of my notes, I wanted to just talk about that. And then I want to end with on a good note, talking about Dylan going to middle school, Kendrick's in college. But so for the past, like, almost two months, I've been feeling a sense of being just overwhelmed with life. Like just handling everything in life. Um, some days better than others. And I know most parents can agree or can understand what I'm saying, just feeling overwhelmed and with everything. And I just told talk to myself and, and listen to the Lord as well that just take just tackle things one one thing at a time. Because like I have a bunch of things I'm trying to juggle complete something to the fullest and then move on to the next like for me getting these episodes together for the um for the podcast have been difficult um because i'm trying to juggle everything i say you know what just focus on the cast right now just focus on putting together a show you got an awesome co-host that enjoys doing the show because he's been checking up like say hey when we're going to shoot again so 
it's it's really been his dad holding it up because <laughs> he's always ready. So which is awesome, which inspires me and which have me in the studio right now. Um, I'm just going to feed off his energy and everything. So um, just take it one day at a time, too. I'm trying to jump ahead with my brother's recovery and what that's going to look like for when I when he comes to my home. Just let's just tackle today. And he's making improvements every day. So let's just go with that. Like use that positivity of him improving every day. Um, only the Lord knows where he will be ultimately by the time he gets to my place. Um, he's putting up a fight to get better. So I'm inspired by that. And um, the prayers and well wishes from my friends and family have been great. So I just wanted to say that, but take it one day at a time. Whatever you're going through, just one day at a time. Um, take time to just relax and unplug. Like last night, I have a bunch of things going on, but last night I decided just to watch a movie. And normally for me, it takes me a long time to watch a movie. I know Dylan <laughs> can watch a movie like multiple times in the same day. <laughs> but for me, I have to go through and I'm watching trailers. I already know what this movie's about, but I watched the trailer for it anyway. And it takes me a long time to watch a movie. Last night I saw a movie and I watched it. Um, enjoyed myself, just relax. And I knew I was going to get up in the morning, do some show prep and things like that, and just get ready to do the show. So that's enough about me um, and what's going on with me. Let's get into Dylan, who this little dude. Well, you will always be. You will always be little to me. Even if you become bigger than me, you will always be little to me. You'll be always be my chicken fries. Hey, <laughs> but I don't think you ever said that on the show before. I know, wow, awesome. Yeah, I call them chicken fries from time to time. But he started middle school. So Dylan, take it away. So. Just let us know and give us insight on middle school and what do you think and not, oh, it's cool, not that kind of response. <laughs> like, let us know what's going on with you. All right. So uh, middle school has been feeling pretty fun, honestly. It's not too hard, but it's going to get harder soon. We are already taking a test. Like, I already had a test tomorrow to do once I get there, which usually takes up most of the day. And my favorite part of middle school is connections, because they're always just so fun to go to. And I have two different types of connections, which is A day and B day, which uh, some mostly switch every day. And one of them is visual arts, and the other one is this computer science class. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, I. I went up to a school for open house, so we saw the schedule and everything. I said, okay, that should be interesting. I like the um, the classes that he's taking um, or connections that he's taking um, that are going to challenge him and probably inspire him because of the, his creativity. But um, when you were talking about the um, computer classes, what have you guys – have you guys went over anything yet that um, has piqued your interest? Well, we haven't really gone over much computer stuff yet, but we uh, mostly talk about so far, but like mostly the future once you get a job, like work ethics. <laughs> ethics. I don't know how to pronounce ethics. It. Yes, that. Yeah. Okay. Work ethics. Yes. Hard skills, soft skills, and we even uh, did our own little resume. I think it was Friday or some. No, not Friday. It was sometime last week though. Okay. We made our own little resume. And we were showed how to make one. That's awesome. That's that's sixth grade, and he's learning how to do a resume because there's adults who don't know how to do a resume. So that is awesome. And that's so. And I'm gonna get on my soapbox just a little, just a uh, little. Your what now? My soapbox. What's that? All right. So a soapbox is when you have something that you really believe in, um, and. And, of course, you know, some people may feel like um, you're trying to push your opinion on them. But so for me, like just when it comes to when people challenge the education in schools, um, it's it's really the involvement of parents and the teachers, those when they're when they're partnered together and like and meet like I make it a point to always meet 
Dylan's teachers. So I can tell them about him, like, you know, because, you know, he's a really bright kid. I give him that. He's smart. He's definitely smarter than I was at his age. (laughs) But to make sure that they, you know, challenge him and things like that. And those teachers, you know, they run with the information you give them on your kids. Like, so if you know your kid slacks off in class, you need to let the teacher know so the teacher can pay special attention to that kid. Um, and, and, and almost teach them in a manner to keep them engaged and things like that. So so I'm a real firm believer of parents and teachers having that kind of partnership. But I love it to see when they're learning things that they're going to truly need in in real life. Like so him learning that now, imagine what he'll be when it's time for him to actually put that resume to use and then. Now's the time for him to start building those kind of skills with the computer classes and stuff to help him in the future. So I'm glad to hear that. And so computer, um, computer science, was it a? That's why it's actually called something else. Foundation something. something. Okay. I just don't remember. So I said computer science. Computer science. And what was the other connection class? Visual arts. And visual arts. Yes. Which I know you're going to have fun in there. I've been having fun in it. Yeah. I I already got to draw pretty a lot. A lot, oh, really? Yeah, like on Friday, one of our render assignments was literally just drawing something. Oh, see? That's cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, any homework yet? Uh, not a lot right now. It's right. probably going to have like a lot more in the future. But yeah, not much. Oh, really, oh it's coming. The work I would get is like assignments we did get to finish in class. Oh, okay. And I asked him that question, guys, because, you know, I, you know, Dylan comes home and he's instantly on both his phones. Um, I don't see him actually open his uh, backpack up and pull any books out. So I always ask him any homework because I'm, you know, I'm trying to gauge, you know. Um, I actually let him set the tone. Both his brothers will let him set the tone. Like, how much do I need to police you when it comes to um, schoolwork? They've been pretty good. But I know from history, from your brother's history, Mm -hmm. that middle school is where Kendrick tried to slip a little bit. Like he had classes, or I would say a class, I forget which class it was, that he just wouldn't do the homework. Like he would do the homework for everything else, he just wouldn't do it for that class. What does Parmy think that's that's his math class? I can't remember what class it was. Harmony feels like it's a math class because he probably just thought at the time it was just too hard. He was just like, you know what? This is too hard. I'm no, not doing it. that's the funny thing. It wasn't that the class was hard. He was just being lazy. It's like he just purposely decided, I'll just be lazy, and I'll just be lazy with this class. Then, of course, once me and his mom got on to him, that completely changed. And right after graduation, as like, we were getting ready for college stuff for him, he said to me, that was the turning point for him. Like he knew he was aware that he was slacking off. And it's because we put him, got him back on track. And from that point on, he just excelled. Like, so you, so the parents out there, or not even parents, if you're the auntie or uncle or whatever, or your, your any guardian, family member. any family member, if a kid's getting off track, you know, talk to him, get to know why is it that you're, getting off track kind of thing because you never know that could be the moment where you get them on the right track or you you change the trajectory of their life basically because you got involved at that moment where they were slipping and still letting them completely fall off and I think that's what happens with kids a lot we wait to the end of the school year or we don't address it at all and we just let them uh, dig themselves in a hole and once that hole gets too big the kid doesn't want to try to climb out of it, you know. And I, I think that helps contributes to, you know, kids dropping out and stuff, you know. I mean, most kids, it's a unique thing for them. So, like, you know, some it's just things going on at home or whatever. But some kids, it's just they allow simply laziness to get in and take them away from their studies. And parents and guardians and all that, we just got to make sure we get them back on track. So, but when homework does come, I'm going to have you commit to the people. When you have homework, you're going to do it. Okay. No, I'm saying you're going to tell the people, hey, I'm going to take care of my homework. I just want <laughs> I just want to have a witness that he said he's going to um, take care of his homework. Godzilla, will you make sure that Dylan take care of his homework every day? 
Why not? I like sleeping better. But when you're awake, because you do wake up sometimes, will you make sure that he take care of his homework? Okay. Thank I'll you. Try. That's all I can ask. It's just to try. But so, Dylan's going to do his homework. So, middle school's going great? Mm-hmm. Good. Really good. Fun. Are you going to use the... Oh, I got to give you $10 for the lockers. You going to use, use the locker? I will. Okay. So, I got to remember to get $10. That... Always give, because I don't keep cash on me like that, but anytime there's something that comes up and he needs money, it takes me forever to, to get it together. So after uh, we record the show, I'm going to go and get some cash so on Monday he can take hit the cash and go get you a locker. Because his backpack is not going to make it if he carries. I don't even put, put all my stuff in my backpack. I would just, my teacher says to take out all the stuff I need for the day, and then put the backpack in my uh, fifth period class. So then, once I get to fifth period, once fifth period ends, I would take all my stuff and then go to Connections. And I would spend the rest of my day there. All right. But ultimately, when you go home from school, you have all your books? Yes, I have yeah. So, th- But if you had a locker, then you could put some of the books that you don't need. Like, if you don't have homework in that class, you don't need to have to bring the book home. So this is your first year with lockers, right? Yeah, yes. so yeah, so that's ultimately what the locker is for. So you can just store your books so you don't have to carry around all day. Uh, how much time do you guys have between classes? Do you know? Um, between classes, we, once it's time to switch, we get our stuff, line up, and just go. And go. But I'm saying, because, like, will you have time to go? Are the lockers on the same hallway as uh, all your classes? Yes, like between all the class doors, there's a locker, lo- okay. a bunch of lockers there. I don't know why I can't. I was just there like a couple of weeks ago. On some lockers, I have uh, seen like only a few lockers. Seen like probably think what's the code for it? Just attached to the locker. Mm-hmm. I think it was a code for it. But yeah, I don't really see anyone use lockers at all. Really? Oh. Yeah, they're probably they're not used to it. Like these are the sixth grade. I'm pretty sure if you were to see the seventh grade, eighth grade hall. They're using lockers because they're used to it. So, I mean, you guys are only, what, two two weeks in? Technically, well, this is technically this is, three, but the first week was only two days long. Okay, okay. So, really two full weeks in. Two full weeks in, yeah. So, yeah, the kids probably just haven't got used to it yet. And uh, they're probably waiting on the same thing as uh, you are, waiting for your parent to pay for the locker. So, uh, I'll make sure I get that to you today or tomorrow. But anyway. I can remind you. All right. Thank you. All right. So talk about you. Let's let's pivot to Kendrick. Kendrick's going to college. Well, he's in college. He's in college. Kendrick, it goes to Clayton State University. I'm not sure if we made that announcement on the show, but he goes to Clayton State University. uh, Film production major. His ultimate goal is to work for NFL films. So that's really cool. Films. Maybe he could teach me a thing or two. So he may wind up partnering on some things. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Like some of the stuff Kendrick learns in college, he drops the knowledge to his uh, brother. And then, uh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. And then maybe you guys allow me to be in some of your productions. He, he can't even, uh, maybe. Wow. This, is, this, guy's tell. Tough. <laughs> this kid is tough. <laughs> I, better, I better smash the audition because, uh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, so. Dropped Kendrick off to college about a week and a half ago, um, and I didn't cry. So, like, my whole thing, I was like, am I going to cry? But it's still surreal to me um, that he's a way, like, you know, like, we're living life without Kendrick. Um, so it's still um, getting used to it to a certain extent. The place is a lot quieter because now I only have one, one guy talking to me instead of two. And um, I think I w- you still have more people talking to you. Oh, oh yeah. There's always plenty of people talking. Wait, before we finish, uh, talk about Kendrick. You know, we got to have the introduction. All right. So I guess you guys from the last couple of episodes, you probably see some new guys up here. But let's introduce everybody so everybody's on the same page because I'm sure you guys are going to be seeing them a lot. So go ahead with the introductions. So have you already heard before? This is Godzilla. This is Rengoku. This is Dead Everyday Man. <laughs> Dead <laughs> Everyday Man. <laughs> well, this is you, ain't it? <laughs> right. Who else we got here? 
that says N, like the actual letter. His name is the actual letter N. Uh huh. And then this is Uzi. Uzi. I like Uzi. I like that. I like Ian too. I like Godzilla. And then, uh, him. Rangunku. Rangoku. Yes, him. But yes, all right. So now you guys are caught up on those guys. All right. Introduction. You will see these guys more. You will see them more. Um, so. The other day, I um, stopped by at the Kendrick's first full week of college. I stopped by. He doesn't have class on Fridays. He he has an awesome schedule. He doesn't have he doesn't have class on Fridays, Saturdays, and of course Sundays. Wait, but do you even know why he doesn't have class on Fridays? He just picked his. You know, he gets to pick his own schedule, so he picked to not have class on Friday. Okay. So yeah, so that that's pretty cool. I think. Um, so I took him and we had um took him. We had some Taco Bell and just. Caught up on things for him to give you guys how he feels. He feels college is the same as high school to him. That's how it's feel right now, except for doesn't have to wake Dylan up in the morning. Uh, he only has to worry about getting himself. He never had to wake me up for a while when he was still there. Well, I guess he's so like in his sense of just making sure if I say, hey, did Dylan get on the school bus? You got on there, like whether he walked you or not, but so he can say that happened. So, um, and then he has to walk to class, so he doesn't catch a bus to school. Now he has to walk to class. He says like a seven minute walk. So, um, pretty cool for him. Um, he's loving it basically. Um, he's he's already going to other friends' dorms and stuff like that. So like, he's fitting in. So I'm I'm happy. He's um cool with the classes. So I already started getting homework, of course, because they're not going to waste no time in college. Um, so I he's remember him saying that. Yeah. So he's he's handling everything pretty uh, pretty good. He just he hit me up right before we taped the show that said he ordered something from Amazon. So me and Dylan are going to have to drop that off to him when it comes. You know, of course, it will be my pleasure to um, go back up there. And uh, so Dylan hasn't seen him since he left for college, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for Dylan to get to see him again. So that's going to be really cool. So I'm looking forward to that. It just, I'm excited. So despite everything that's been going on in the Barnes family life, um, we're going to remain positive. And I'm like, it's, I'm, it's still an exciting moment in my life and definitely my son's lives to reach this next chapter of their lives, middle school and um, college. In college, yeah. So this is very exciting. And then I have some things um, working on, too, um, that, of course, once they're finalized, I will then share because I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too early on some things. And also, since we last talked on the show, I have uh, I have a business coach. Um, so. I have to catch up on my homework because things have I've been th really thrown even off. Even you have homework now. And even I have homework now. Uh, shout out to Coach K. Um, so I have to catch up on some things. And so, you know, life. But I'm starting to better manage it. Like, so today, knock out the um, the show. Uh, me and Dylan grab something to eat. I guess on the way home. And then I'll work on my homework assignments. It requires me to record um to help me become a better speaker. That's what my homework assignment is. And, and I'm, um, I'll probably share some on a later episode, some of those homework assignments. It's a great way for me to practice, too. Yeah, so it's a great way for me to practice, and I can practice right here on the show. So, Mr. Beast Necker is $700 million. He's been waiting to say that. <laughs> I was like, just like, oh, I was like, oh, this is a perfect time. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know if you guys know Mr. Beast. I know most of my audience is around my age or adults, period. Um, Mr. Beast. Maybe parents who uh, have their own children probably seen maybe their children watching it. Maybe. No. No. Oh. Oh, wow. That's some late breaking. I don't know if you heard... Uh, my super producer, but there's some news on Mr. Beast, so we're gonna put a pin right there on Mr. Beast, and I have to go find that out. So that's another thing. A shout out to my super producer, updating each other as as um, parents, because he's a parent himself, updating me on that. Like I didn't know. Like the last time I uh, checked on, because I you know searched him, um, 
that wasn't part of it. So that's good that he's making me aware. So now he's making me aware. I'm sure after the show, me and Dylan are dive into seeing what's going on with that. So that's a good uh, call out because I just saw his commercial um, yesterday. So all right, we're going to put a pin on Mr. Beast for now. Okay. And we'll find out on that. Um, yeah. Wow. That's good to get that update. Yeah, we definitely need to make sure we're uh, informing each other on things, especially when you know someone has younger kids and things like that. So what else you got on your mind before we close this show out? We have a busy day today. Uh, busy schedule. <laughs> busy schedule. <laughs> Godzilla, what you looking at? Well, what's going on, Godzilla? Is that what? purple or pink? What? The lights find you. It looks like a purple color. Why? Because that's the... Is that what... Reminds me of Shin Godzilla. Who's Godzilla? Shin Godzilla. What that mean? That's a particular Godzilla? His spikes glow pink. I mean purple. Oh. Learn something new every day. Um, something I won't use in life. So that's cool. All right. All right. So I think that's going to wrap up this episode of the Daddy Everyday Show. You guys have any final words? No. No. Oh. All right. You have any final words, Dylan? No. <laughs> so continue to pray for our family and I'll pray for your families. Um, I like that whenever I do pray, I try to pray as broadly as I can. So hopefully some of those prayers reach you guys. Um, can't believe this is episode 41, I believe. Um, I'd be off sometimes, but I think this is episode 41. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah. I think the last one we shot was 40. So, so 41. Or, yeah. That's how math works, right? Yes. All right. Awesome. Well, but, uh, <laughs> getting how math works now? Are you it's been that a long old? Time. I don't know. Maybe it's new math. It'd be throwing me off. <laughs> but um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for the continued support. Um, we're not going to let you guys down. We're going to have these episodes coming to you guys. I appreciate you guys reaching out to um, ask, hey, what's the next episode? So I really appreciate that. Um, it, it really keeps me going like that kind of thing. So, um, if you have a friend or a family member that's doing something, lend them a little support, even if it's not financial support, just give them words of encouragement because sometimes that can go a long way. Like you just don't know what everyone's dealing with. So giving words of encouragement to someone can be a big deal. You can change the, the path of their lives. You have no idea how impactful words of encouragement can be so uh on behalf of dylan and godzilla the crew over here i'm delonzo and thank you guys for tuning into the daddy everyday show <laughs>